thank you for joining us tonight. I want to encourage you to turn in your Bibles or your electronic device to Psalm chapter 5. In the Old Testament, Psalm chapter 5. Boy, I tell you what, it's it's been crazy. And we've had a lot of people in our church family uh, to be either directly affected or by the coronavirus or by someone in their family uh, being diagnosed or testing positive with uh, COVID-19. And so I want to encourage you to pray for all of those uh, among our church family who uh, are um, touched by this illness, by this virus, uh, either directly or indirectly uh, because of contact or whatever. Uh, but it is real, and want to encourage you to do your part to stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, uh, do all those kind of things. But specifically pray for those uh, who are dealing with this because uh, it's it's real and it messes up our life. And it does give us a time to reflect on things and, you know, we really think about those things that are important. And that, that really goes into kind of some of the things that I want to talk about coming from Psalm chapter 5. Uh, this is a prayer, uh, or a song, because it's addressed to the chief musician. Uh, so a, a song of prayer uh, that, that David writes. And so I want us to uh, read through this psalm, and then we will break down some of these verses and talk about some of those things. But notice in Psalm chapter 5, the psalmist writes, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry my king and my god for to you i will pray my voice you shall hear in the morning O lord in the morning i will direct it to you and i will look up for you are not a god who takes pleasure in wickedness nor shall evil dwell with you the boastful shall not stand in your sight you hate all workers of iniquity you shall destroy those who speak falsehood the lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man but as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. I will fear of you. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your, straight path, your way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. Pronounce them guilty, O God. Let them fall by their own counsel. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. And so I want us to think about this prayer that David writes, kind of in a song, and think about what he's going through. He's he's going through troubles. Have you been in troubles, man? I mean, <laughs> we think about troubles that we're going through right now because of this pandemic and because of all the changes that uh, are going on in life. And you know, I was thinking about that the other day, uh, about how life changes. Uh, no matter what we try to do, no matter how secure we try to make things and uh, make them good and make them exactly like we want them life changes uh, that's just that's the reality of life and you know that um, it just constantly changes and so it's never going to be uh, exactly like we want it forever and that's that's a good thing uh, though most of us don't like a lot of change like that but it causes us to realize who we are where we are and who's in control and where we're going as God's people and uh, that's kind of where David's at. Um, things are going on around him. Things are not going his way. And his enemies are after him. You remember when, after he had been anointed king, how Saul uh, and Saul's army, they were after David. But David never would. He respected the office of the king, of the anointed one. And he would never uh, do anything uh, to Saul. Uh, but he he fought against God's people, the people who are, are against the people who... Uh, stood against God and so we can see his his passion we can see his desire to serve God though later we'll know we know he made some huge mistakes but he still remained faithful to God despite those mistakes and he repented of those we know uh, by looking in uh, the book of 2nd Samuel there 
Uh, but I want you to notice what he says. Give ear to my words, O Lord. So he, he makes these, uh, he begins with these three things in, in verse one, verses 1 and 2 there. Give ear to my words. Lord, listen to me. Consider my meditation. These are the things that I'm dwelling on. These are the things that, that occupy my mind right now. Give heed to the voice of my cry. Hear my cry, Lord. I am crying out to you. And he acknowledges of all the places to turn in time of need. He acknowledges the one who he's praying to. He acknowledges the one who he is turning to because of these troubles, because his, his enemies uh, are surrounding him. He's looking for protection from God, and he acknowledges who he's going to. My King and my God. Where do you go when things aren't going your way? A lot of times, don't we say, what, what can I do? What can I do for you? And really, the first and foremost thing we ought to do for anyone who's going through troubled times or for ourselves is pray. Go to the king. Go to God. And that's what David did. He said, all this is going on around me, Lord. God, all this is going on around me, and, and, and I don't like it. And so I'm coming to you. I want you to hear my cry. And so have you ever thought about prayer in your own life? Here is this song of prayer that, that is written, likely by David. And the one that he goes to is God. He acknowledges him as king. Though he is king of Israel, or at least will be um, at some point in his life, he acknowledges God as his king. He is my king, therefore... I can do the other things for you, God, that I need to do because I make you my king. And so have you ever wondered uh, about that? Have you ever thought about where you go when times are tough, when things aren't going your way? Not just in difficult times like um, Chuck mentioned this morning, not just um, as 911, but all the time. But especially when I'm in need, but all, all the time. You see, David acknowledged him as king. He says, listen, I'm acknowledging you in the order and the way this should go. You're God and I'm not. And I need you. Hear my cry. You, my king. For to you I will pray, he says. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you and I will look up. What do you do the first thing in the day? And that's what David said. Listen, I'm not going to start my day, Lord, without coming to you in, in the good times and in the not so good times. You are my king and I'm coming to you. You're going to hear my voice in the morning. I will direct it to you and I will look up. He said, listen, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you my prayer. I'm giving you my prayer. These are the things that I'm meditating on. These are the things that I'm, that are on my mind and my heart. I'm going to share them with you, God, because you're my king. But notice what he says. I will look up. I'm waiting for an answer. Because I know you're God and you're the one in control. And I'm waiting for your answer. I'm waiting to see what you're going to do in response to, to my cry, to my predicament, to the things going on in my life. Because God had put him in that position, or would put him in that position. God had anointed him king, called him the man after God's own heart. And so David acknowledges who he is approaching. He acknowledges, listen, I'm approaching you, my king, but I'm going to wait for our answer from you because only you can answer my prayer. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. And David reveals what God thinks about wickedness. He has no part to do with wickedness. And he doesn't want uh, any part of those who practice wickedness. And so those who practice wickedness, they don't have that covenant relationship with God that they can approach God 
And Dave, but David said, listen, not, I'm not that way. And I realize you do not like wickedness or those who practice wickedness. He says, you abhor the bloodthirsty and deceitful man, those who would use things, situations, and people to get their way, deceitfulness. And David said, God abhors that. He can't stand that. But then he says, as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. He says, listen, I'm coming to you in fear to worship you. And that's not a, a dreadful fear like, oh my goodness, he's going to strike me down. It's, it's respect. I'm coming to you respecting who you are and who I am. I'm coming to you humbly, and I'm worshiping you. So, we talk about prayer. This is a prayer to God, but he's acknowledging who he's worshiping. Have you ever thought about worship and why you go to worship? And I, I, I've seen over the years people like, well, I, you know, I need this, and I need that, and I like this, and I like that, and I, I want, I want uh, the preacher to be like this, and I want the elders to, to speak and do like this, and I want the song leader to lead and do like this, and and, and the people leading, I want them to do like this. And man, I want this kind of worship. And, and David says, I'm coming to you, worship Lord, my King, my God, in the right spirit. That it's not about me. I am giving my all to you, God, because you are my King. Worship, you see, takes a lot of effort on my part. And sometimes, and I know it's easy, we, we live in a, I mean, Saturday on Saturdays I love to watch college football it's entertaining and, and and I get into it especially when my team plays and and when they're doing great man I'm all I'm excited and I'm for I'm shouting and I'm screaming but when they do bad I'm I'm upset and I'm frustrated you see that's all about the circumstances of what's happening in the way I'm entertaining so I'm sitting back being entertained and and, and my emotions are, are going based on what's happening uh, by the entertainment. And we have to be careful not to let that bleed over into worship. You see, God is the audience of worship. And we come to worship Him. And David said, listen, my prayer is you, my King, my God, and I know you don't like wickedness. Therefore, when I come to worship, I realize who you are and who I am. And I am pouring myself out in worship to you. Lead me, O oh Lord in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. He's asking God to make his way, make God's way so straight that I can't miss it. Make it so obvious that I can't miss it. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Verse 9. Their inward part, he's going back to talk about the wickedness. Their inward part is destruction. Inside they, there is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. So he's talking about these wicked people. They speak well. They talk well. They flatter with their tongue. But inside, they're an open tomb. They're destruction. Pronounce them guilty. He's, he's asking God to, to take, uh, take his vengeance on them. Let because they practice wickedness. For they, verse 10, have rebelled against you. And then look at what he says in verse 11 and 12. But let all those who rejoice put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. Let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Rejoice because God, the King, He's going to protect, He's going to take care, He's going to provide. And He ends up there, He says, O oh Lord, You will bless the righteous. With favor You will surround Him as with a shield. I, I read that there's two types of shields that they would use in the Old Testament. One would be uh, a small one that they could hold on their arm. The other one would be a tall one, very similar to what we see 
the Romans. The Romans also had, in New Testament times, had two types of shields. They had the smaller one that you could hold on your arm, and then they had the tall one. It would, it would protect your whole body. And that's the picture here that David is saying. You're, with favor, with your blessings, Lord, you will surround the righteous as with a shield. We sing that song, a shield about me. And that's what the song is about, is to asking God to bless us as with that shield. And I read one, one person, I thought it was, I thought it was really um, powerful what, what they were saying. Uh, this guy says, he puts a canopy of blessing around the righteous man, which may not be visible to the physical eye, but they are present and are as real as any physical blessing. Have you ever wondered sometimes, God, where are you? Where are you when I need you? Where are you in the midst of all this going on? Well, according to Psalm 5, God is there. According to um, uh, the beginning in the book of Genesis, God is there. According to the New Testament, God is there. And he's He's there blessing those, even though we may not know it. He's there blessing his people. He's there blessing those who humble themselves before him and to and acknowledge him as who he is, just like David. You, O oh Lord, are king. And I'm going to approach you because I need you. And I know that you will answer my prayer somehow, some way. And I'm looking up anticipating an answer from you because you surround those that are righteous who serve you. I hope that this psalm has been helpful to you. Uh, some powerful things in there and we've not really had time to touch the hem of the garment in this psalm but there's some powerful things in there. I want to encourage you to go back and read Psalm chapter 5 and just meditate and think about those things. Think about that prayer. Think about his worship. Think about what he says about the wicked uh, and then think about the blessings that God gives the righteous, even though, uh, even blessings that we may not be able to see. I hope this has been helpful and encouraging to you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. If we can help you anyway, uh, pray with you, pray for you, to lift you up, uh, to aid you in giving your life to the Lord, uh, please give us a call. Look us up on our uh, website, savannachurchchrist.com. Give us a call and uh, let us help you anywhere we can. Thank you for joining us tonight. God bless.